the last paper on the, on the session. But I think, and the first paper, um, the Cultural Economic Conservatives in Turkey, they are not coming, they cancelled. So we have three papers today. Hopefully, Tatiana will show up. So I thought to give both of you enough time to do your presentations. Um, <clears throat> we will start, we'll go in order of the program. And so we start with Leah's paper, how does political literates relate to political attitudes among Israeli students? So I give the floor to you. Okay, thank you. And then we have Tatiana will show up. I'm coming from Bailan University. I'm happy to be here today and thank you for choosing to come to my presentation. I'm going to talk about the impact of political literacy on political attitude. Who show better political attitude? Those who vote for the left or those who vote for the right? And I also wanted to understand the process by which people both make their political opinion and acquire political literacy. political illiteracy. Many people don't know basic geopolitical, social, and economic facts. Just look at the numbers. Uh, they are based on a big survey that was done in the United States. Uh, despite nearly constant news coverage, 70%, 70% of Americans could not find Israel or Iran on the map of the uh, Middle East. Nine in ten people could not locate Afghanistan. I'm talking about political leaders. I believe that there is a problem of political illiteracy, and I show some data that supports the claim. There is a constant news coverage of Middle East, for example, but 70% could not locate Israel or Iran on the map. 54% uh, did not know that Sudan is a country in Africa. To me, it's uh, mm. unbelievable. And uh, uh, we all, I believe, remember pictures, those horrible pictures uh, from Indonesia, tsunami, disaster. Remember? 75% uh, could not locate Indonesia on the map. They also didn't know that the majority of people in Indonesia are Muslims. In fact, Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the world. Uh, let me ask you a question. Let's vote. Who do you think that who do you think show higher political literacy? Those who vote for the right or those who vote for the left? Please vote. Who think it's those who vote for the right? Raise your hand. Raise your, raise your hand if you think that those who vote for the right show high political literacy. Two per three parts. Uh, let's please raise your hand if you think that those who vote for the left show high political literacy. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five people. Okay. Uh, I, have, uh, I will tell you the answer very, very soon. But <laughs> that, uh, that's what you are going to see in my presentation. So I conducted my study in Israel. And therefore, I asked people about Israeli politics. Uh, but I believe that correlations can be the same in many countries. So what are my questions? I had 16, 16 questions. But for example, what uh, position is currently held by the person in the picture? Who is in the picture? Here must be, yes. Uh, who is the current Minister of Education? You can ask yourself about your own country, if you know it or not. <laughs> uh, which office is currently held by Sylvan Shalom? Uh, you hear the difficult question. Uh, to which party Israel Katz belongs? Who knows Israel Katz? Hmm? Likud. Likud, yes. So we had 16 questions like that. And uh, we have two hypotheses, two predictions about the relationship between political literacy and uh, uh, political uh, and voting. One hypothesis uh, states that 
ordinary people don't know much about politics and economy. And uh, since they don't know enough political facts, they don't know, they don't worry, for example, about things that should have been worried or worry about things that should not have been worried. For example, Iranian nuclear bomb, uh, global warming, gun control, and etc. So, uh, suppose we have a linear relationship between political literacy and voting, either to the right or to the left, because we don't know what uh, decision is right, is correct, uh, then the hypothesis of bounded rationality would be true, if one knows better than he votes to the correct side. Uh, there is also a different hypothesis that comes from the motivated reason theory and um, uh, a session uh, yesterday was dedicated to motivated reasoning. One of the famous guys from motivated reasoning is Dan Khan from Yale Law School. And uh, he says that it's not the problem of public rationality, it's a problem of motivated reasoning. Motivated reasoning refers to our tendency to feed the information we acquire or even see with our own eyes to the goal that we wish to achieve. We see what we want to see and we hear what we want to hear. Beauty, as it's stated, is in, is a, in the eyes of the beholder. In a classic study, uh, two psychologists asked people from two Ivy League colleges to watch a film that featured a set of controversial referee decisions that were made do during the football game between the teams from this school. So, so we had students from two schools from Ivy League and they watched a film that described the football game. And they were asked about referee decisions. And people agreed with referee decisions if it was for their school. But it was not because they said it was for my school, then uh, I'm, uh, then I liked it. It was uh, more unconscious. They were unaware of uh, that bias. But they saw the game as they wanted to see, and um, uh, they wanted to feel solidarity with their school. And uh, in order to feel solidarity, to, to be with uh, other, with the, with the group to which they belong, they shape their perception. Um, in a similar line, both another explanation that comes from cognitive theory, and it's much more basic. It talk, talks about confirmation bias and what is called by Bayson and Jason Liard disjunction effect. Do you remember what is disjunction effect? I'm going to skip it. <laughs> uh, so, a confirmation bias is that uh, that we search for information that confirms what we already believe. And we don't search for something that can reject the things that we believe in. And uh, uh, we uh, tend to disregard information that this can confirm what we believe in. For example, if you vote for Democrats, then you search for information that supports Democrats. And since in the web there is a lot of information, no matter what you want, you will find the support. So, so intelligent people from the right uh, political wing uh, know more political facts than less intelligent people from the right, but uh, they can persuade themselves, they can persuade others, and um, they can make better their point. Okay, so that was the confirmation bias. And what is the prediction that comes from motivated reasoning theory? Uh, here are people with low political literacy on one side. Here are people with high political literacy on the other side. Right, uh, uh, red, colored red are uh, people who uh, mm, tend to vote uh, left, who have left political background. And colored blue, people who tend to vote right, right, who have right political background. 
So the more people know, the more information people get, the more they support uh, what they wanted to believe, the more extreme and the more polarized they become in their political view. Okay? So as long as you uh, read more information, you don't come some, uh, make uh, what is called compensation, you don't come somewhere to the middle. You get more support to your previous views and you become more extreme. And that's what I wanted to share. There are also some other people that uh, support um, their theories coming in the same line as motivated reasoning theory. I just have no time to talk about their research, but if you want, I can uh, talk about uh, their support uh, afterwards. It's uh, attitude polarization, selective attention, even the Masia somatic marker hypothesis about what to do, attitude inertia, evolution of psychology, uh, Wilson, and etc. So, uh, what have I done in my study? I have conducted it in two Israeli universities, uh, Ariel University College and Tel Aviv University. I have 90 participants from Ariel and 95 participants from Tel Aviv. They filled in several questions. One was political attitude questionnaire. I asked them whether they vote for the left, uh, whether they perceive themselves left or right. Right was one, left was the side. And uh, I chose the numbers at random. It uh, doesn't uh, mean that uh, they possess any value. Okay. And then they answered uh, to which party they vote. Uh, I gave them also a political literacy questionnaire with tips and questions about uh, Israeli political figures. And I asked them about their political involvement, uh, whether they go to social demonstrations, economic demonstrations, and so on. And I asked if they already listened, watched, or read news today, at the same day of the university. That's the data that I have. Uh, you are with me, that's okay? So, here you see the description of my participants. The rule of thumb says that people from Ariel vote right and people from Tel Aviv vote left. In fact, what I found that the rule of thumb was correct. People from Ariel covered blue vote right. Very right, slightly right in the middle. And people from Tel Aviv, the color purple, vote for the left. There are actual vote, votes that are presented by Israeli election committee in Ariel and in Tel Aviv. Blue means vote right, red means vote left. So actual people in Ariel vote to the right, and it means that my sample was similar to the population. The vote is as the population and as expected. What is about political literacy? Political literacy in Ariel and political literacy in Tel Aviv. X is Y, you see the percentage of correct answers to the question. In Ariel, um, the average was uh, roughly the same. Uh, in Tel Aviv, slightly higher, but it was uh, insignificant. But the variance in Tel Aviv was much higher than the variance in Ariel. Uh, Kronbach alpha of my questionnaire was normal 0.75. Okay. Here are the results. And the results feed the motivated reasoning hypothesis. Here are people from Tel Aviv University. Here are people who show low political literacy, high political literacy, low political literacy, high political literacy. So the people who show high political literacy in Tel Aviv University vote more left. And people in Ariel who show high political literacy vote more to the right. And the difference was significant. 
Very, very, very. Study the same materials. I mean, if you don't have med school in Ariel, in Ariel is mostly human, human sciences, and uh, so uh, you, it is a bit difficult to compare both. Uh, you know, for the sake of convenience, I took people from social science, uh, science in both Ariel and uh, um, and Tel Aviv University, and suppose I had found that uh, in Tel Aviv University. Uh, where, where, where do you think I could have found that uh, uh, they know better about politics? I don't know. I didn't do no. this research. No, <laughs> no but uh, suppose I had found the difference, I could have seen that um, there is a problem that I have to explain, that they have a confounding variable, and etc. And et but I didn't find the difference in, uh, in political literacy. I, I found I difference in variance. And maybe because I found differences in variance, I found uh, mm, the most significant correlation because uh, I had no ceiling effects and etc. But uh, <laughs> uh, but because um, mm, I had no difference in political interest, I don't have uh, to worry about this problem. So I am not convinced that the students in Tel Aviv I don't, I don't have uh, the same political. They don't have what? They don't have the same political interest than in Ariel. I'm, I'm not no. convinced about it's not interest. Political interest or political knowledge or political political and interest? Political in interest and okay. knowledge and everything. Okay. You know, I'm not if, convinced. Okay. Uh, I think there are two interesting points. Uh, first of all, if we can extrapolate from my sample to the to the entire students in Tel Aviv or in Ariel, that's one point. And another point if they have the same interest, if my sample has the same interest or not. My sample has the same interest if we measure it by political involvement, where you go to social demonstrations, political demonstrations, and etc. It, um, it was the same. But uh, if we are talking about extra extrapolation, if I can extrapolate from students from social science to medical students, etc., I cannot extrapolate averages, and I don't say that I can and I want to extrapolate averages, but I say that the, I can talk about correlation. I believe that correlation is uh, about the more you know, uh, you know, the more you go to this side, or the more you read newspapers, the more you know, I, that's, uh, that's what I believe that I can extrapolate. Okay, so we came to the discussion. <laughs> we started this 
slide here earlier, and thank you. Thank you for the question. I like the question. Okay. So, uh, I can say that the source of the problem is not public rationality. It's not a story that people don't know. What is the problem? Uh, it's a, in motivated reason and in confirmation bias. We seldom choose our political ideology. We are born into it. And after we have certain political ideology, we read news, we search for information that uh, comes in line with what we already believe. We are trapped in confirmation bias. And so I believe that it has a huge impact on uh, persuasion. So if you want to persuade somebody, you have to think about how to overcome the confirmation bias and the motivated reasoning. And for example, we can connect to the person values. Or we can talk about something hypothetical. Mira Lieberman from Tel Aviv University uh, has a research about control level theory and how it connects to confirmation bias. Uh, but it's a subject for a different talk. Uh, so we have to think how to overcome it. Um, and uh, I think that that's all. And uh, I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, I will be happy to answer the questions that you may have. No, let's take a few questions and then we'll take the next person. No, let's take a few questions. Oh. So I will be happy to take care of questions if you have questions. No questions? <laughs> There's the first time in my life in the conference that I had no questions. Well, I just <laughs> yes. a question that is a comment. Um, you show correlations between uh, participation, activity levels of political yes. engagement, like going to protest, uh -huh. um, knowledge, so reading the newspaper, and yes. then also the literacy measure, which yes. I think is, I think that's really fascinating, your measure of uh, mm -hmm. literacy, and then the attitudes. Uh, but presumably they're, they influence in both directions, yes. because at I least personally my experience has been that when I become more active, I also start caring more and reading more and then knowing more. And yes. then, so, so I completely, I absolutely agree with your comment. And I think that it's a problem of every correlation of research mm -hmm. is that we don't know what is the source and the motivation. They both influence each other. And I try to make the, the model as it seems to me logical. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played with correlations at the Amos program, that, that. Mm -hmm. What, what I got, got it was, uh, uh, was this presented here because in some directions after controlling some variables I uh, had no correlations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, this, uh, mm, mm, this model seems to me logical, but I absolutely agree that there are different explanations and different uh, connections. 